you finally decide to start that YouTube channel or that business or that creative project or that new scary goal. You finally decide to stop watching other people live out their dreams and you decide to follow your own. You have to overcome so many mental obstacles and really get outside of your comfort zone as you delve into uncertainty. But you do it and you think, imagine where I'll be a year from now. So here I am, one year after starting this YouTube channel, and I used to get told by Ali Abzal, just put 50 videos out there and just see where you're at. But here I am, one year later, 50 videos later, and I have no idea where I'm at. I don't have any big monthly incomes to show you, I haven't been able to quit my job or upgrade my lifestyle, and this isn't going to be one of those videos where I show you my YouTube analytics and show you how much money I've made in the past year from YouTube, because honestly, I have put hours and hours and hours into this channel and I haven't actually made a single penny from it. But this video is not going to be me complaining about that because the reality is whenever you start something that has uncertainty, you have to accept that uncertainty. Otherwise, if you want a guarantee, you should be doing low risk, low reward things, but you want more than that. So I just want to be real with you. One year after starting, you might not actually see much. Here's the honest truth. We're often told that with hard work and consistency, you will see success. But there are so many people out there who are working hard, they're showing up every single week, they're reading the same self-help books as you, they're doing the same online courses, they're reciting the same affirmations, and they want it just as bad, if not more. But not every YouTube channel is going to blow up, not every business is going to take off, not every startup is going to take off the ground. So in this case, I'm classing my success on YouTube by subscribers, views, and monetization. Obviously, I know there is more than that, but I feel like that's how most people would define a successful YouTube channel. And I also feel like one year isn't necessarily the time limit that we should give to measure success. I've been trying to apply Matt Diavella's three-year rule to my YouTube channel where I give it enough time, but the problem is so often we do see these successes that do happen in a short amount of time, and we think that's what should happen for us. And if it doesn't, that's when we start comparing ourselves. We just seem to live in a world of quick results and instant gratification. And so my growth in the past year on YouTube has been pretty modest. It's been really good in that I'm almost at 4,000 subscribers, but it's been very slow and steady and I've not been picked up by YouTube yet. Why don't you like me? <laughs> So one year on from starting that creative project, that goal, that unthinkable dream that really requires you to put yourself outside of your comfort zone, you might not see the big rewards that you were hoping for. But this video isn't meant to be negative, telling you that you're not going to succeed. Instead, I just want to flip success on its head. Because whilst you might not see the big rewards that you were hoping for, you might see smaller rewards elsewhere. Because whilst YouTube hasn't changed my life, it has done this. Free therapy. I feel like I spent so much of my 20s looking at other people's lives and wishing that I could do what they do. And starting YouTube was really the first time where I actually did do something that I really wanted to do and blocked out the opinions of others. And even now, I still think that I'm really brave for doing that. I feel like my 18 year old self would look at me now with her jaw on the floor thinking, who is this girl? I once actually went to a hypnotherapy session for confidence and the hypnotherapist said to me that I should think about a time where I put myself out there and it wasn't a complete failure and use that as an example to help me with confidence anytime I was doing it again. And this is definitely one of those moments because I feel like now that I know that I can put myself out there and not care about what other people think, it means that I can do that again. There's nothing stopping me. I also feel that in this digital world, we spend so much time consuming other people's content and other people's ideas that we almost drown our own identity into that. But when you decide to do your own thing, whether that's content creation or a business or anything else, you have to think for yourself. You have to form your own ideas, refine them. And by doing that, you hone in on your voice. And so this becomes like soul searching. And I feel like because of that, I've developed a better sense of self, of self-worth and self-awareness. In fact, even just a few weeks ago, I got a message from a friend that previously would have completely devastated me. And I was really upset, don't get me wrong, but it was the point where I could stand up for myself and say, I actually deserve better than this. And that's only come through pursuing things of my own that have helped me have a better idea of who I am. So basically YouTube has just been free therapy for me and it's been really good therapy. YouTube has also shown me the ripple effects of my own actions. So even a year on, I'm still constantly filled with self-doubt when it comes to my channel. I'm constantly wondering if my videos help people, what the purpose of them is and where it's actually going. Even just a few weeks ago, I was messaging my husband at work saying, am I wasting my time here? Like, what am I doing? Where is this going? Like, I don't know if this is helping anyone or if my videos are even that good. And then I went home and I went onto Instagram and I received this DM. And it was one of those times where the universe quite literally delivers you a message when you really need it. 
I feel like when we set our goals, we sometimes get tunnel vision. Like for me, I've set this rule that once I post a video on a Sunday, I'll never look at it again. Like I'll never think about how it's doing or rewatch it or anything like that. But what I sometimes forget is that those videos are still there. Even if I'm not watching it, at any time somebody can watch a video, even one that I've made weeks or months ago and watch it. And I don't know how it's going to affect them. I was on a call recently with Ali Abdul and Thomas Frank and they both said that Tim Ferriss has completely changed their lives, but they still don't watch all of his content. And I found that so interesting. I think of how much Tim Ferriss has changed my life. And then I think of how little of his stuff I've actually consumed over the last three years. And I think, you know yeah. what, that's fine. You can have an impact on someone without them being a loyal fan who's watching all your stuff. It was such a great reminder to me that it's not always the most obvious numerical count of success that matters, i.e. likes or subscribers, because that doesn't always show our impact value. YouTube also shows me that you don't have to have everything worked out. I feel like every other week I have an identity crisis when it comes to my YouTube channel. I feel like I don't have a niche, I don't know who my audience is, and I have no freaking idea what I'm doing. Whereas in the past, I really had to over plan and iron out every single detail before starting something. I had to learn every single thing there was to know about something before I could start, and I had to feel like I was talented enough to be able to do it. Whereas this past year has really shown me that you can learn as you go along. So for example, even my color grading, I only recently improved that. I had 47 weeks of really dull, gloomy videos that looked completely awful for. But the funny thing is, I don't think anyone actually noticed except for me or other YouTube creators and it didn't really affect how people were watching my videos. So it just shows that you don't have to be a perfectionist, you don't have to be amazing at something to start it and you can really learn as you go along. Even one year on, there's so much to learn. YouTube has given me connections. If someone had told me a year ago that Matt Diavella would be subscribed to my YouTube channel, that Thomas Frank would be following me on Instagram, and that Ali Abdal and I would be on Zoom calls every so often, I honestly would have laughed. It's actually amazing when I think about it that within the space of a year, even with a relatively small channel, I've still been able to connect with these sort of people on that sort of level. Like, that's just insane. Even on a more personal level, I've always found it really hard to connect with people. I've always thought that I was not likable or not going to be accepted by people. And that's more in my real life offline world. But it's when I started started YouTube that I started to really learn that I could connect with people and that was through connecting with people that were watching my videos or other content creators and that's really helped me to have more self-belief in myself when it comes to interacting with others and that has definitely transferred to my offline life. I feel like when you're doing the same things all of the time you're surrounded by the same people all the time and you're getting the same results all of the time and it's only when you start something new and commit to it will you see anything else. So you might not be successful straight away or even at all in the sense that you wanted to but you don't know who you're going to meet along that journey and you don't know what kind of impact those people will have on your life. YouTube has also shown me other sides to myself. I used to be really, really career focused, so much so that I had complete tunnel vision. So even though I used to really enjoy art as a child, I completely let it slip away when I started university. It's like dentistry was all there is. And then I started making YouTube videos. And even when I started, I focused more on a scientific side by focusing on skincare videos. But I really fell in love with the creative process. I'd be at work and all I would think about was going home and filming and editing YouTube videos because I loved how creative it was. And it's because I realized how much I love creativity that I started painting again and drawing again I got back into art and it's crazy to think that if I had never started YouTube I would have never been drawn to those hobbies again so one door could always open another but also I feel like it gives you more perspective on what doors you actually want to open YouTube has given me patience and a lot of frustration if we look at my subscriber count for a moment since I started this channel, you can see that it's been a pretty much flat line. I've only had two peaks. One when my video was shared by Thomas, Matt and Ali, and another when Matt shared my channel on his newsletter. Otherwise, my growth has been pretty steady, but pretty slow at times too. And after I had that first peak, I was actually losing subscribers for about three months before I started to see net growth again. And that was so, so testing. There was also a point where I was so close to reaching my 4,000 watch hours. And then I unlisted a video, not realizing that that would affect my watch time and I ended up losing well over a thousand watch hours. It felt like such a big setback and I honestly cried for ages and it really did test my patience. But I just feel like no journey is smooth and you never know when things will happen because the last time I felt really close to giving up on my channel was actually the day before Ali, Matt and Thomas Frank had shared my video. And so that's what I always remind myself of whenever I'm feeling that uncertainty is that you just never know when things might happen. My analytics have also shown me that it's generally the videos that I think will do badly that end up doing well. So there was a video that I posted recently which was me just painting and talking about social media and my wedding and I expected it to do so badly that I was so close to not posting it I thought no one is gonna watch this and it ended up being one of my best videos and it performed really well and I was so surprised it just goes to show that sometimes when you're so involved in your own work you lose perspective and you're not always the best person to judge it so basically 
basically a year on from starting that creative project or business, you might not succeed in the conventional sense that you'd hope for. That might come later. Within a year, you will build life skills, confidence and perspective that will help you with the project that you're working on or future projects or just life in a general sense. So basically to sum this up with a cheesy quote, as long as you're learning, you're not failing. I really hope that I can keep up this consistency for another year. Fingers crossed I still enjoyed it, but I also just want to say a massive thank you to anyone who has watched my videos or commented or just been there and really supported me, especially the people who encouraged me to keep going because it can be a really scary journey and it's really nice to know that people are there watching. I really do appreciate you guys. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.